Hello guys, today we'll have a code review of an awesome open source project based on Jetstream and Livewire. And it's a pretty complex project called Daybreak to manage the timesheets and manage the planning of vacation for small businesses. And it is a good example of a project that uses really advanced techniques in terms of structuring the Laravel application with Livewire as well. So you will learn a thing or two about Livewire and Fortify itself. So it's more like advanced level code review. And I've picked like 10 things or so from that code. We will discuss them, explain them and learn from the code. Thank you for the creator who has put it as open source project. So Eric Porsche, thank you for helping Laravel people to learn some advanced techniques. So one by one. First thing I've noticed while installing the project is the seeding of admin is done like this. It's not just user create or something, but it uses Fortify class with validation and also just stream configuration. And let's step by step discuss what is happening here. So creates new users is an interface of Fortify. Then there is a class Fortify service provider, which decides create users using some class. So that class create new user implements that interface. And this is actually a public class, not in vendor. It's an app actions, fortify, create new user. And then inside of that create new user, there's a function create, which validates the thing and then does creating. And that author, Eric modified the original fortify method. And we will get to that in a second, but look how it is used in database seeder. So app creates the create new user interface and it is automatically creating a new object of that. And then the create method doesn't just create the user. It also validates it with validator make and runs all the DB transaction. So basically in database seeder, instead of creating user and then everything that is related with that user, because there's like account location, create some defaults. First, the author implemented that in Fortify class for create new user with a transaction and then reused that Fortify class by creating the object in the seeder. I think it's pretty awesome. And if we get back to the create new user class, let's compare that with the original Fortify create new user. If we go to GitHub of Fortify, here's how it looks by default. User create with just three fields. And look how it is extended in here in the Daybreak project. So the same user create with also date of employment, another field, which is fine. But then what happens with that user? It is used for four more features with tab method of Laravel. And tab helper is used for doing something with the result of that object. So another way of writing that thing would be to change the tab to user then the user is the result of all of that. And then we don't need callback function. And then we use the user here like this. And then at the end, we return user. So this would be sentence by sentence, but tab is kind of shorter way in one liner. So if you like one liners or one sentence structures, tab is quite an interesting method to use. And that is all inserted into transaction because some of those methods may fail with SQL queries or something failing. And then the transaction would roll back everything in this case. And next, let's take a look at the user model, which has a lot of traits. So imagine if your model like user model has a lot of relationships, like 10 or 20 or something, you can group them by creating traits. So the main user model is not that long. So fillable hidden casts and a few relationships, which are main relationships to the user model. But if you go to any trade, like for example, has accounts, it lists the relationships and also some other features related to the accounts only same with has locations, for example. So there's owned locations, owns location, and is current location and stuff like that. So additional relationships around the locations. And that idea comes from Laravel Jetstream, which uses actually Fortify under the hood and default user model of Jetstream, for example, has profile photo, has API tokens, has factory is from default model of Laravel, but those two are different. So has profile photo. So that author of Daybreak, Eric, continued that line idea of has something. And also I've seen that behavior in other packages. I think it's from Spati or someone else. So has something trade 
included in user model or in any model and then those relationships extra relationships are kind of group kind of included in the model and it may be reused the trait may be reused if some other model has locations in this project i didn't notice that but generally the traits are created to be reused in multiple classes so you may do that with traits Actually, I remembered where I saw it last time. It was in Laravel.io portal, which is also open source. There's a separate video where I use polymorphic relationships and explain them, but also it's similar thing. So in the model of thread, it has likes, but also other classes of that forum also have likes. So it's a reusable trait. And I will link that video in the description of this video. So you can rewatch that video and check out Laravel IO source for reusable traits. The next thing, remember, I've shown you that Fortify uses create users using some class which extends the interface. So create users using, it just creates the singleton of that object. And then that author, Eric, reused the same logic for all the other classes of Daybreak. So if we open app service provider, in the boot, we see something like this. There's a class called Daybreak, which is app Daybreak. It's a kind of a service provider or kind of like config class or something like that. And among some other things, you have app singleton for invites location members, which is an interface. So in the app service provider, it is bound to add location members using add location member class. It is mostly used for the case where that interface could be extended and implemented by some other class. It's a pretty rare case scenario, but later in this video, I will show you exact example of where it is used and how it is useful. But generally, it's an interesting pattern of having interface and then in your service provider of Laravel, having add location member using or add some using and then later someone else in the future could change that class to their own class to customize things next thing is extending fortify with enabling and disabling features in the whole application if you worked with fortify you probably have seen that you can enable or disable some features just from the config fortify file so eric did the same thing or really similar thing with config app php if we open config at the bottom we have features array so project billing, employee payroll, and CalDAV, whatever that means, you can enable them from here. For example, that's uncommented out. And the features is the class, which is an app providers features PHP, which takes the value from config app features, as you can see, and provides static methods of has project billing feature or has some feature or has some other feature. So anywhere in the project, you may search for has employee payroll feature and then enable some functionality. So if we search for has employee payroll feature, for example, not sure if you can see that well with smaller font, but for example, in the edit user profile, you may find this. So if Daybreak has employee payroll feature, then we do something. Otherwise, we do something else. So this is the way to enable and disable features by doing that in the config. Next pretty quick one is extending Jetstream components or Blade components, in fact. While going through the source, I opened index Blade of one of the folders and I find XH2. What is XH2? You can create a component in resources, views, components, and there are components, some of them by Jetstream, but you can add your own. So H2 Blade, if you just add it here, just do h2 and then add some classes and then attribute merge allows you to add more classes like this. So class text gray 800. So it's pretty easy to use blade components in this context, in this case. And I have, by the way, a separate video on blade components if you haven't used them. So I will link that in the description below. If you go through blade files further, it's livewire blade component or other blade files. You also see underscore function used everywhere for the translation. And the whole project is in German by default. The main web page login form looks like this, so it's in German. And if we go to config app PHP, the default language locale is DE, but look what we have in resources lang. So EN folder is from default Laravel, and then there's DE JSON with translations to German language, but the labels, those keys are in English. So although I'm not a German speaker, I understand only some German language, I can perfectly understand what that means by going into the translations and translate that from English create some ESJSON for Spanish or LTJSON for Lithuanian. The keys are in English, so that's a great decision. 
Next, we take a look at one live wire component, which is time tracking and the function render. But it's not about live wire. It's about structure of this sentence. That sentence could be somewhere in the controller, for example, if you don't use live wire. But look at how readable it is, but how much logic it actually contains. So first, we use this employee. And in our case, it's a user model object. Then we have current location, which comes from if we go to user model, current location is in has location straight which we've seen before. Current location is belongs to with current location ID and the model itself comes from the config from the daybreak class. So you can even specify your own model in the future for location. OK, so we have current location. Then we have from that location time trackings of that location. So let's trace it back. So location model is location. Actually, let's open it up manually location model. Then here we should find time trackings. Here it is, time trackings is has many. Then latest is ordering by created at descending. And then when we have condition, we do something with that. And that condition is not from the request, it's condition. If that employee has location permission for the current location to filter absences, look how readable is the code. So I don't know what's inside the has location permission or anything like that, but I can read it like in an English language. So if employee has permission to filter absences in this location, then we do filter them. And that query is filter employees. And if we go to filter employees and search for that in all project, we have scope of filter employees where in of the user and that scope trade filters employees. If we find the usages, we have it in the model of time tracking here. If we go back to our live wire component, so we filter employees by certain IDs of user. And even that is pretty complex statement. So this employee filter is passed by live wire component. So we can filter that from the request. And also we can filter employees by this current user ID. So look how much is happening with one sentence. That is what I wanted to discuss and to show you how much of the logic can be hidden in relationships, scopes, and other functions to make the controller or the live wire component code readable to the ones who will work with that in the future. And final thing I wanted to show you in this video, because it's getting longer and I'm trying to limit the videos to 10 minutes or so. So look at the mount method of live wire component. It could be a constructor of a controller, the same thing. And look at this parameter, date formatter, what it is. We go to date formatter and it is an interface of formatting the dates in different methods like str to date, standard date, generates, carbon, rule, and stuff like that. And this will be actually the example of I promise to show you why it is useful to have something using class. One of that big list is formats dates using German date formatter. So German date formatter class implements date formatter. And since the project is in German language for Germany by default, it implements everything that is needed for Germany for dates formatting and stuff like that for Germany. So future developers could implement app formatter Spanish date formatter or US date formatter or whatever following the rules by interface. So interface shows the methods that are needed and the class implements those methods for now for Germany. But if in the future the project becomes international, then all is needed to do in app service provider, change German date formatter to whatever date formatter. And not only that, that formatter contains the validation rules. So custom validation rules are created for daytime format to rule, for example, with passes condition and with message. And that message is also international, as you can see with underscore translated. So this is an example of pattern of class implementing interface bounded in app service provider and used in actually live wire component or constructor in the controller with dependency injection. I know it sounds pretty complex, but as I said in the beginning of this video, this repo contains some advanced techniques of Laravel and not only Laravel, PHP, object oriented programming and stuff like that. So this is how many tips I've got just from the very beginning, just by looking at the very beginning of this repository. What do you think? Do you have any comments on any of those items? Shoot in the comments below and let's discuss. And if you want me to continue analyzing this repository, I'll probably do that as separate videos topic by topic, which would be shorter. So also comment below if you want me to continue with this repository repository and then subscribe to the channel and tell your friends to subscribe and support my mission by checking out one of the three products that you can see on the screen now, 
whenever someone purchases them, I have more free time to shoot free videos on YouTube for you guys. See you guys in other videos.